Good morning, everyone. It is Sunday, July 21st, about 10.45 a.m. This video is being pre-recorded. It will not be streaming live on any of my platforms due to the fact that I'm probably going to have to edit it a bunch of times um, because we'll be talking about some sensitive topics and there are defamation lawsuits being floated around everywhere right now that I don't particularly want to be a part of. Um, the topic I'm about to talk about, I have been able to avoid for the last couple months and that has been on purpose. I've not looked into this case. I have not talked about this case. I have not wanted anything to do with this case. I've wanted to stay as far away from it as possible. Unfortunately, that is no longer possible. Unfortunately, it was brought um, into my life through the front door of my office in a very deceptive and concerning way. I'm not formally involved in this case. A lot of private investigators in the area are, I'm not one of them. I have not been hired by anybody in this case officially. Unfortunately, as I've said, there have been some deceptive people that are closely involved with this case who have now gotten me wrapped up in it um, in a roundabout way that I am not happy about. Um, trying to see it as the will of God and speak out about what I know, what I don't know, um, generalizations, I guess, if you will. Um, like I said, there's defamation lawsuits being floated around out there right now. So really need to stick to the facts. I'm going to try not to interject my opinions. Anything that is my opinion that isn't facts, I will see as my opinion only, not a reflection on my business, not a reflection on my employees. Um, and there are very few employees left right now. So with that being said, um, a couple months ago, don't know if you guys have heard, it is international news. Um, a woman by the name of Micah Miller unfortunately took her own life up in Robinson County, North Carolina. She was the wife of a, the second wife of a well-known, I won't call him a pastor or a preacher. Um, a well-known leader in a non-denominational business that is, I, I hesitate to even call it church, um, and I, I, would, I would liken him to a cult leader. Now, why it has been so controversial is because there's a lot of, there's a lot of allegations, there's a lot of stuff going on. Listen, as far as I'm concerned, this woman, this poor woman did take her own life. Now, the circumstances surrounding that are very interesting. There's a lot of really prominent people that were involved in this church, if you will, if you want to call it that. Um, there's a lot of money involved. There's a lot of illegal activity involved. This has, it's like an octopus. It's like a, 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 sea, a sea monster. It has its tentacles and everything and everyone around here seemingly. Um, my only full disclosure, my only formal involvement as, as far as being hired to, to um, be involved with this was months ago, and it was in relation to a family court case by one of the family members of this pastor where I, was, where I served this family member at his house. I have him on video, I have Mike on video, and I have the family member I served on video. And the allegations in this particular case against him were very disturbing and that was not his own family court case. That's as far as my formal involvement goes. My informal involvement, um, like I said, I've been avoiding this like the plague. Unfortunately, it's gotten to a level um, where the safest thing for me to do now is to speak out and is to address this thing head on. I would first and foremost <clears throat> like to say I am not, I would never be, not only am I not, I will be homeless before I ever take a penny from a fake church, okay? I'm a devout Catholic. I go to Mass every Sunday. I don't believe in non-denominational churches. I don't believe in Protestant churches. I don't believe in the Protestant religion as a whole. I think it is a church of man. I believe it is about worshiping men. I believe it is about worshiping so-called preachers and pastors which brings me to the overall issue at hand surrounding this case. 
which is the fact that there was a lot of um, control and manipulation tactics used both on Micah Miller, which has come out through written documentation, such as court documents, such as text messages, and on members of the church who I have spoken to now personally, unfortunately, not formally, not because I'm investigating anything, but because it was brought to my doorstep and I had no choice but to start asking questions. And the answers I got were very disturbing. We're talking, um, this thing has its own culture. This is, um, I keep calling it On The Rocks Church. That's not the name of it. It's Solid Rock Church out here in Market Common District or Myrtle Beach. Um, there's fat, the, the factual, and here, here's where you have to be careful. Um, how do I want to say this? Um, people have left the church, have left that particular church, um, because they felt that the women in particular were being preyed upon by the men. Um, they felt like they were being groomed. Um, there was allegations of these particular church members, clergy if you will, picking up homeless people, exploiting them. Um, there's drug accusations. There's underage um, sexual stuff going on, allegedly. Um, one of the clergy members is a, is a registered sex offender. Um, there's a culture in that area, and I'm not saying in that church in particular, but in that area, uh, there's a culture of um, swingers, subculture, if you will, of swingers in that area. It, it really is like its own society in there. Um, I don't, it's not a place I hang out, <laughs> to be honest with you. Um, and I'm sorry if I'm, I'm this is a little choppy. I, I have to be very, very careful about what I say right now. Long of the short, where am I going with this? This is the problem with these non-denominational business churches, if you will, these mega churches, these things that pop up. Number one, there's no oversight, okay? Number two, there's a lot of money involved. Number three, these, it is the cult of man where these people, you know, the congregation, if you will, they don't, they go to whatever church where they like the method, where they like the preacher. So as Catholics, I go, as a Catholic, I go to mass every Sunday, not particularly because I like or don't like the priest. It factors very little into my decision. I go to church every, go to mass every Sunday for the Eucharist because it's a whole system of worship because it's a, I'm worshiping the true God in his physical presence in that church. It's not about what anybody is saying or what anybody is not saying, okay? And that is the main difference. Um, I don't worship man, I worship God. And now the problem we're running into is there's so many churches just like this our solid rock church and people get very disenchanted, if you will, with Christianity because they don't understand the difference between a sick cult and actual Christianity. They don't understand the difference between the religion of man and the religion that God left, the, the solid rock, if you will, of Peter, okay? You go into these non-denominational churches, you don't see a crucifix, you don't see the Blessed Virgin, you don't see holy water, you don't, there's no incense. All it is is a narcissistic man up on the stage entertaining people. It's quite honestly a circus. And like I said, I have very strong opinions about this, which is why I have stayed away from this subject for months. I did not want to be involved. I do not want to be involved. I will probably get myself in trouble with my mouth over this because I have very strong opinions on these non-denominational churches to the point where my children have known for years that they are not allowed to step foot. I don't care if it's for a funeral, a wedding, I don't care what it's for, they are not allowed to step foot in one of these Protestant churches, ever, ever, not allowed. Don't even tiptoe on the property, 
it's that serious. Now the things that are coming out, um, which is how I got wrapped up in it in a roundabout way, unfortunately, um, I would like to say I do, I don't want to say too much. Um, I have security watching my back right now. Let's just put it that way. Okay. Um, how I got wrapped up in it is In this, in this church, in this business, in this cult, if you will, there is a culture of fear. Fear is the main tactic they use to try to control people, especially women. Now, a lot of these women, unfortunately, have been in, this, in that community since they were children. Micah Miller, I believe to be one of them. They are brainwashed unfortunately and i'm not trying to speak ill of the dead or anything like that but those are the facts um and so what these psychos are are narcissistic bullies that's all they are at the end of the day that's all it comes down to and as soon as they see that they can't intimidate you first they'll try to befriend you okay this is how it works they'll try to befriend, befriend you smooth talk you into doing whatever it is they want you to do. And once they realize that's not going to work, they try to intimidate you and cause fear. Um, a lot of this is done through blackmailing. A lot of this is done through, um, for example, I'll just give an example. A man who works for somebody like this pastor, or I'm not saying this happened, I'm saying this is generally how it works. A man, they'll have, so the pastor will have security and bodyguards and investigators within the church, okay? That's how it works. It's like run like Nazi Germany. Um, and anybody who goes against them is excommunicated, shunned from society, lives ruined, money taken, assets frozen, okay? Very serious. And I will say this, the FBI is involved in this case not because this woman died, and that's unfortunate. That's very unfortunate. I know there's private investigators investigating this death. I'm not one of them. Let me just say that. Um, but the FBI is involved due to money. Money laundering. Uh, embezzlement. Okay. I found this on the web for YouTube. Check it out. Siri's freaking out. Sorry, Siri. Um, embezzlement. Things like that. White collar crime. I suspect, uh, I don't know if I should say this, I suspect some other crimes as well, besides white collar crimes. Um, where was I going with that? Um, so the way it works, so they have their flying monkeys, if you will, they have their people, right? They're bullies who go and intimidate people into giving them information. Or they'll go and let's say, for example, they need information from somebody like me, right? What they'll do is they'll send somebody to me to try to set me up. They will send, for example, a male, an attractive male, and maybe he's married, maybe he's, whatever the situation is, he'll try to seduce me. He'll try to um, get me to, you know, if I was married, get me to have an affair. Or if he's married, get me to you know, be the mistress, if you will, the gumad is what we call it in Italian, okay? And then they will, there will be a paper trail of that. There will be pictures. So now when I don't do what they want me to do, they'll post pictures of me on the internet or they'll, they're whatever. They'll try to ruin my good name and my reputation. Now, for me, this doesn't work. I'm a devout Catholic and my morals are impeccable. So every attempt so far to set me up to infiltrate my business to get information that i quite frankly don't have has a hundred percent failed so what comes next is intimidation what comes next is um stalking like you see what he did to his own wife um he slashed her tires allegedly we don't know that it was him i shouldn't say that somebody slashed her tires to try to incite fear we saw him, there's video of him stalking her at East Coast Honda, I think it was. There's a lot of things that went on. I have a lot of connections to these places. Um, 
which is also why I, I understand why people think I am more involved in this situation than I am. I really am an outsider. I really know nothing. I've never investigated these people. I didn't know anything about the case until I had to look into it because, like I said, it came knocking on my front door. Um, <clears throat> so what they do is it's this culture of fear, right? So they'll, they'll blackmail, they'll stalk, they'll slash hire, they'll be, they have people paid off, right? Typically, I'm not saying in this case this is true, I'm saying typically what we see with this is people are paid off, they'll be high ranking, let's say for example, police officers, right? They'll be high ranking police within the church. There'll be lawyers within the church. It's its own society. It really is. It's almost like the mafia. Um, and so it makes it very hard to get out because once you're in, you know, it's not like you go to mass on Sundays and then go back to your life. This for this for them it's an entire that's their whole life. The church is their life. Everything they do revolves around the church. All their assets are tied up in the church. Whatever the case may be, um, their kids are in the school. They're, it just, you know, their wife is a teacher there, and it just makes it so. Um, it's very hard to leave. It's very hard to get out without drama, without your life being impacted. Okay, and so that is what I think I'm trying to drive home right now, is that it's not as cut and dry as. Oh, it's a fake Protestant church, you know, where they go once a week and go home. A lot of these are much more cultish. And this particular one is known for that. And that is a fact. It is, he, there's, there's so much evidence. It's overwhelming evidence that, that this particular man, John Paul Miller, used all these tactics for years and years and years and years. And many people have left the church because of it. Um, that have spoken out over the years, but unfortunately, I don't think it was ever really taken serious until this major event happened of Micah Miller committing suicide, unfortunately. Now, that re that relationship was started in infidelity, and he admits that he just had an interview with Nation National New Nation News or something, um, admitting to it. So he had a, a wife, he had five kids with her, he cheated on her with Micah Miller, who was his babysitter, and his best friend's wife, one of his good friend's wives, he actually officiated the wedding, and that caused the destruction of his first marriage, and now there's allegations in court documents that he's continued to have affairs with other women, and which led to the demise of his relationship with Micah. Um, so the man obviously has a spirit of lust, has a problem with a spirit of lust, adultery, um, but even more so than that, the whole environment is all about domination, control through sex, control through drugs, control through money, power, um, domination, fear. That's the best way I can describe it, and this is coming from people who I have, who have been in the church, who have told me this now. So what, is, what do we do about this? Um, nothing, I don't know. Um, I don't know what you can do about it. Um, especially I say that as somebody who's a devout Catholic living in the Bible Belt, we're outnumbered um, <laughs> 10 to one. We, I have to be so very careful. I have to be so, it's very difficult because everybody I do business with, every, it's just, I, it's all of the attorneys, it's, it, 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 this thing goes deep, okay? As Catholic, so, and, and as a, I have a, a duty to God, the actual God, not the fake God that is um, talked about in, in these Sunday sermons, the real God. I have a duty to him, my Lord, and my lady. Our Lady to speak out against it. Uh, like I said, I've been avoiding it. I've known for a little while kind of what's going on, um, but now it was brought into my domain. And when I get attacked, when I get hit, I hit back places hard. And so I won't stop. I'll never stop. I'll never stop until the truth comes out. 
until everybody who tried to, um, who had deceptive inclinations uh, towards me is held accountable. And that's my plan and that's what I'll do. And I'll succeed because I worship the real God and he wants the truth to come out. So prayers for Micah's family, prayers for everybody involved in this disgusting, disgusting cult. Um, justice for Micah, I think is the hashtag right now. I pray for the attorneys involved on all sides. Most of this stuff is not coming out through, you know, civil lawsuits or criminal stuff is coming out through family court, which again is also my domain. Um, and I've worked on so many cases that are so similar to this. I mean, it, it's just, the level of narcissism is off the charts right now. Um, the level of just psychological abuse and manipulation that I see on a daily basis is off the charts. The, the level of gaslighting, um, it's just, I don't, I don't understand how people fall for it anymore. I, I, I mean, I, like in her case, it's different. I get it. Like your brainwash from a young age, but like, the people that are still going to that church, I, like, listen, it doesn't take a psychologist, it doesn't take a private investigator, it doesn't take a detective, um, it doesn't take an attorney to take one look at that man and, and realize something's wrong, okay? He's not, he's not playing, he doesn't appear to be playing with a full deck of cards. Um, and I will say this. I'm not the one. I'm not the one. <laughs> I'm not the one. I'm not Micah Miller. I'm not a cult member. And I'm a devout Catholic. And there's no tactic that will ever get me to fold. Not deception. Not setting me up. Not fear. Not intimidation. Nothing. Um, and in the end, be careful. Be careful. Be careful who you start fights with. Be careful that they can't finish them better than you can, legally, of course. Um, so there's more to this case. It's gonna come out. The truth is gonna come out. I have, now that I have been forced to investigate this for my own protection, I have found out things that the news isn't talking about, that nobody's talking about. And I am protected. I have security, I have informed the proper authorities, and I will continue to work with whoever I need to work with to make sure that at the end of the day, people like John Paul Miller are not allowed to psychologically abuse anyone, especially in mass numbers ever again. So I hope y'all have a blessed Sunday. Keep me in your prayers. Um, there's a lot going on in the world. This is just, unfortunately, a drop in the bucket. Like I said, not something I officially ever wanted to be involved in, and I'm not officially involved, but it walked in through my door, and now it has to be dealt with. So have a great Sunday. Have a great rest of the week. Um, that's all I got.